In today's class, we will look at two more formulations in linear programming. The first one is called the media selection problem and the other is called the bicycle problem. We will first look at the media selection problem which is a very popular formulation in linear programming. The problem is as follows. A company wants to advertise their product in four different media which are television, newspaper, websites and radio. The reach per advertisement in these four media are 8000, 5000, 3000 and 2000 respectively. Each advertisement is going to cost and the costs are given as rupees 4 lakhs, 3 lakhs, 2 lakhs and 1.5 lakh respectively in each of these four different media namely television, newspaper, website and radio. The company does not want to have a large number of advertisements in a single media and therefore, it restricts the number of advertisements that it wishes to have in each media as 3, 4, 5 and 4 respectively. There is also a budget restriction and the budget restriction is rupees 32 lakhs which is the maximum amount that can be spent in these advertisements. So, the problem is how many advertisements does the company decide to have in each of the media so that we maximize the overall reach. Now, we are going to formulate this problem as a linear programming problem and we first define the decision variables. Now, the decision variables are x 1 to x 4 where x 1 is the number of advertisements placed in television, x 2 in newspaper, x 3 in websites and x 4 in radio. There are four different media in which these advertisements can be placed and there are four decision variables one corresponding to each of these. We now move on to write the objective function. The objective function is to maximize the total reach. The total reach is the sum of the reach associated with each of these media. So, if x 1 advertisements go to T v then 8000 x 1 is the reach that we get. Similarly, 5000 x 2 is the reach that we have through the advertisements in the newspaper. 3000 x 3 is for websites and 2000 x 4 is for radio. So, the total reach is a sum of the reach obtained through advertisements in the four media and therefore, we wish to maximize 8000 x 1 plus 5000 x 2 plus 3000 x 3 plus 2000 x 4. There are several constraints. The first constraint is the budget restriction. So, x 1 advertisements in television would cost us 4 x 1 lakhs, x 2 advertisements in newspaper would cost us 3 x 2 lakhs, x 3 advertisements in the website would cost us 2 x 3 and x 4 advertisements in the radio would cost us 1.5 x 4. So, the total money that we will be spending is 4 x 1 plus 3 x 2 plus 2 x 3 plus 1.5 x 4 and that cannot exceed 32 lakhs which is the budget restriction. We also have restrictions on the number of advertisements that we would place in each of these media and they are given by x 1 less than or equal to 3, x 2 less than or equal to 4 x 3 less than or equal to 5 and x 4 less than or equal to 4. We also have the non-negativity restriction which is x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 greater than or equal to 0. So, this completes the formulation of the media selection problem where the objective is to maximize the total reach. There is a budget restriction and there are restrictions 
on the maximum number of advertisements that can be placed in each of the media. So, this formulation has four decision variables and it has five constraint. One is the overall budget constraint and the other four are restrictions on the number of advertisements that we would like to place in each of these media. I have also indicated that these four constraints are called limits or bounds and if we have a constraint of the form x 1 less than equal to 3 or x 2 less than equal to 4, which means if we are restricting the value that a variable can take. And if that comes in the form of a constraint like these four constraints that we have, these constraints are also called bounds on the variable. At the moment we will define these four as four separate constraints, but they are also called bounds on the individual variables. So, this formulation has four variables, it has five constraints, four of which are bounds and it has the non-negativity restriction. Once again, since we have defined x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4 as the number of advertisements, we have this question whether x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 should be defined as continuous variables or should be defined as integer variables. At the moment, we are going to define them as continuous variables because we are going to formulate a linear programming problem. So, we restrict these variables to be continuous and at the moment we do not restrict them to have only integer values. We now move on to the second formulation for this class which is called a bicycle problem and it is a very interesting problem and you will see how interesting it is as we move along. Now, the problem statement is as follows. Three friends let us call them A, B and C start from P and want to reach Q. P and Q are different places or different points and P and Q are 5 kilometers away. They have only one bicycle and only one person rides the bicycle at a time. So, we will assume that the remaining two people will be walking at different speeds while one person will be riding the bicycle. Now, the three people can walk at speeds 4, 5 and 6 kilometers per hour and they can ride the bicycle at 7, 8 and 10 kilometers per hour when they get to ride the bicycle. How do they travel such that all the three reach the destination Q at the earliest time? Now, this is a very interesting problem that also has a simple linear programming formulation. Now, we will also observe that when we try and solve this problem, the first thing we observe is the individual cycling speeds 7, 8 and 10 kilometer per hour are faster than the individual walking speeds of 4, 5 and 6 kilometers per hour. The slowest among the cycling speed is still higher than the fastest among the walking speed and therefore, at any point in time one of them will be riding the bicycle while the other two will be walking. And we also have to understand that when they are walking, they are walking at different speeds and therefore, they are not going to walk together. We will also make one assumption that it actually does not matter who starts the cycle first whoever is riding the cycle will go to a certain distance, stop leave the cycle there and start walking, while the other two who have been walking the one who reaches the cycle first between the two of them will now take the cycle and ride a certain distance, leave the cycle at some point and walk towards the destination. Now, the third person when the person reaches there will now take the cycle and come towards the destination. So, we will try to model this situation as a linear programming problem and our assumption is valid because the, the fastest of the walking speeds which is 6 kilometer per hour is still smaller than the slowest of the cycling speeds which is 7 kilometers per hour. So, with this 
assumption let us start formulating this problem. So, there are three of them. So, we will say that out of the distance of 5 kilometers let person A ride a distance x 1 in the cycle, let person B ride x 2 in the cycle and let person C ride x 3 in the cycle. It also means that person A is going to walk phi minus x 1, person B will walk phi minus x 2 and person C will walk phi minus x 3. So, there are three variables which are called x 1, x 2, x 3 which represent the distance cycled by A, B and C respectively. Now, we have to find out the time taken by A. Now, the time taken by A is the time taken when A is using the cycle and the time when A is walking. So, A is travelling a distance x 1 and A is riding at 7 kilometers per hour. So, the time taken by A when A is riding the bicycle is x 1 by 7. The time taken by A when A is walking is A walks a distance of phi minus x 1 because A cycles a distance of x 1, A walks a distance of phi minus x 1 and A walks at the speed of 4 kilometers per hour. So, the time taken by A in walking phi minus x 1 is phi minus x 1 by 4. So, the total time taken by A is x 1 by 7 plus phi minus x 1 by 4. Now, we have to find out the time taken by B and the computations are similar. So, B cycles a distance of x 2 therefore, B would take time x 2 by 8 on the cycle b would walk a distance of phi minus x 2 and would take phi minus x 2 by 5 hours to walk and the total time taken by b will be x 2 by 8 plus phi minus x 2 by 5 in hours. Similarly, we can compute the time taken by c which is the sum of the time taken when c is riding the cycle and the time taken when c is walking. So, c rides at a speed of 10. So, c would take time x 3 by 10 to cover a distance of x 3. c would take phi minus x 3 by 6 because c walks at 6 kilometers per hour and covers a distance of phi minus x 3. So, the total time taken by c is equal to x 3 by 10 plus phi minus x 3 by 6. Now, these three are not constraints by themselves. We have to write constraints out of this. At the moment, the only constraint we can write is x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equals phi. The distance cycled by A and the distance cycled by B and the distance cycled by C is equal to 5. So, x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 5 where we also do two things, we restrict the total distance to 5 and we also now say that only one person rides the cycle at a time which is impl implied and implicitly assumed in the formulation. We write an equation x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equals 5 under the assumption that one of them is using the bicycle right through the distance and that comes from the assumption that the fastest of the walking speeds is slower than the slowest of the cycling speed. This would mean that one person would be using the bicycle at any point in time. So, the one constraint that we have written is x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equals 5 and we are yet to write other constraints and the objective function. Let us now see that. Now, we all know that we wish to minimize the time at which all three reach the destination 
So, the, the objective is to find out the time at which all three reach the destination at the earliest. So, all the three would have reached the destination when the last person out of A, B and C reaches the destination. Therefore, we minimize the maximum of the three times, the time taken by A, the time taken by B and the time taken by C. The maximum of the three times is going to decide when all the three have reached the destination. So, the, the maximum of the three is the time in which all three have reached the destination and we now wish to minimize the maximum of the three times. So, let us call the maximum of the three times to be u which is a variable. So, we minimize u which is our objective function. Now, the corresponding constraints are since u is the maximum of the three times u has to be greater than or equal to the three times. Therefore, u greater than or equal to x 1 by 7 plus phi minus x 1 by 4, u greater than or equal to x 2 by 8 plus phi minus x 2 by 5 and u greater than or equal to x 3 by 10 plus phi minus x 3 by 6. Now, we realize that we have written the objective function and we have also written three constraints where we relate the variable u which is in the objective function to the three times taken by a, b and c respectively. We also have the constraint x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 5 which is the fourth constraint and x 1, x 2, x 3 and u greater than or equal to 0. So, this problem has now four variables. The three variables x 1, x 2, x 3 which are the distance cycled by a, b and c and u which is the maximum of the times taken by a, b and c respectively. So, the objective is to minimize u, u greater than or equal to time taken by a, u greater than or equal to time taken by b, u greater than or equal to time taken by c and x 1, x 2, x 3 and u greater than or equal to 0. So, the formulation has four variables four constraints, the three constraints that are shown here for u and the constraint x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 5 and then all the four variables are greater than or equal to 0. Now, this formulation also teaches us to have objective functions which essentially try to minimize the maximum of certain functions or in certain other formulations we will have situations where we have to maximize the minimum of certain functions. So, if we have to minimize the maximum of certain functions, in this case minimize the maximum of these three functions. Now, define another variable u which represents the maximum of the three. So, minimize the u and then say that since u is the maximum of the three, u has to be greater than or equal to each one of the three. So, this formulation helps us understand and helps us do the modeling when we have situations where we minimize the maximum of certain given functions. In the next class, we will look at two more formulations related to linear programming.